Okay, so first I talk about square root function. Okay, square root function is pretty important because you keep using that and year 12 will not learn this again. Okay, year 12 will not learn that again. So the simplest square root form will be square root x. Okay, it will be square root x. And then it will from 0 to infinity like this. And the key feature will be it got endpoints. It got domain. Domain is r plus unit 0, or I can write that 0 to infinity. And range is the same, 0 to infinity. So how we can sketch this thing? Okay, how we can sketch this? So step number one is find endpoint. Okay, step number one is to find endpoint. So how do we find endpoint? Endpoint is to solve the inside thing to make it equals to zero. Solve for the x. And then the k, the constant you add, will be the, uh, the endpoints value. So h comma k will be the endpoints. I'll show you later. Step number two, you look at a value and k value. Uh, not a value and n value. Okay, so what is a value? A value is the number times in front of the square root. N value is the number you times in front of the x. Okay, N is here and A is here. You look at those two values. N is the coefficient of x and A is the number you times uh, before the square root. So you look at those two values. Okay, so your normal graph looks like that. Okay, so both A greater than 0 and N greater than 0. Now, if your a smaller than zero, if your a smaller than zero, so if a smaller than zero, that will be reflected by the x-axis. Then the graph will look like this. It's when a smaller than zero and n greater than zero. Okay, case number three is when a greater than zero but n smaller than zero. The direction will be this direction, reflected by the y-axis. Then the last case will be they both smaller than zero. Okay, they both smaller than zero. If they both smaller than zero, then it will be reflected twice. Okay, first reflect to here, a second reflect to here. So that will be the shape like that. So it got four directions for square root. Okay, it got four directions for square root. So the number times with x is the reflection in y. The number of times in front is the reflection in the x. Okay, so let's have a look at this. And also how we solve for domain. Domain is the number under the square root needs to be greater or equals to zero. I think we talk about that when we talk about implied domains. Okay, implied domains. Everything under the square root needs to be greater or equals to zero. Then I will solve for x and that will be my domain. So for example, the domain for this question will be x plus one greater or equals to zero. X will be greater or equals to negative one. That will be my domain. That will be my domain. So let's have a think how we can find the endpoints. The endpoints will be x plus 1 equals to 0, then x equals to negative 1. So negative 1 and negative 3 will be the endpoint. Okay, negative 1 and negative 3 will be the endpoint. Let me find my ruler. So negative one, negative three, where are they? Okay, I have negative one, negative three here. And let's think about the direction of this graph. I have one times one times x, they both positive. If they both positive, they will have shape like this. Okay, they will have shape like that. So your end points is here, and the shape is like that. So this is the shape, but you will attach the x, y intercept. You will have x, y intercept. So how we can find x, y intercept? So when x equals to zero, y x equals to zero, y equals to square root one minus three, y equals to negative two. 
So you will have zero negative two. That's your y intercept. And then you will work out uh, when y equals to zero. That minus three needs to be zero. Square root x plus one needs to be three. Then x plus one needs to be nine. X needs to be eight. The x needs to be 8. So, if I can extend that longer, 8 is here. Okay, x axis is here. So, you will have 8, 0. So, the shape of this graph will be this. You will have, first is negative 1 and negative 3, 0, negative 2, and 8, comma, 0. So we'll talk about the domain. So the domain already work out is x greater than negative one. And you can also see on your graph. So it's negative one to infinity. Then the range will be everything above this line. Okay, everything above the screen line. So which is negative three to infinity. Okay, negative three to infinity. Okay, that's the first one. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. I will rewrite it into fx equals to minus two square root x plus one and plus one. Okay, so first we talk about the end point. The end point will be minus one and one. So how do we find x value is x plus 1 equals to 0. x will be minus 1. So minus 1 comma 1. 1 is this number here. Okay. So that's the end points. And second thing is we look at the shape. Okay. I have this number smaller than 0. But this is greater than 0. That's smaller than 0. That's greater than 0. So when you have a number times in front of the square root and it's smaller than zero, it will be reflect in the x-axis. So reflect in x-axis. So the original graph looks like this. And if you reflect in the x-axis, it will be this shape. Okay, so the graph will be this shape. And points is here and go downwards like that. Okay, let's put the information we know here. So we have minus one and one, which is here. And you have, okay, this shape is like this shape. So you can see x, y intercept. You can see x, y intercept. Let's say when x equals to 0, y equals to 1 minus 2 root 1, y equals to minus 1. So you have 0 minus 1, which is here. And you can have x intercept. So when y equals to 0, 1 will equal to 2 root of that. So a half equals to that. X plus one equals to a quarter. Then X equals to a minus three on four. So a quarter subtract one minus three on four. Which should be here. And the shape will be like this. And this point, this point, and this point. So here is negative three on four comma zero. So we have domain. Domain is everything to the right hand side, which is negative one to infinity. And the range will be negative infinity to one, included one. Okay, all the things negative to up.
Okay, for the next one, for the next one. Okay, so first of all, I will solve 5 minus x. So 5 So 5 minus x equals to 0, then x will be 5. And the number you add is 1. So the end point will be 5 comma 1. Okay, 5 comma 1. So I can write as negative 2, negative x plus 5 and plus 1. So I will have negative number here and negative coefficient here. So it will be reflected twice, okay, reflected twice. So originally it looks like that. Going, okay, originally it looks like that. Reflect once like that and reflect twice will be like that. Okay, so this will be the final shape, okay. That's the end points and like this direction. So... Let's put the endpoints on. So I have five one. So five one is here. Okay, that direction. Okay, that direction. So the shape will be like that. So you will have x y intercepts. So when x equals to 0, y will be 1 minus 2 root 5. 1 minus 2 root 5. Is this number greater than 0 or smaller than 0? Is that number greater or smaller than 0? 1 minus 2 root 5. Greater or smaller than 0? Because you want to see it's above axis or below the x axis. Below or above? Anyone? Positive or negative? You need to know that. Negative. Thank you. You need that smaller than zero. So if the number smaller than zero, you will have point like around here. Okay, I don't know exactly where is it. So let's put that 5 comma 1. And that's zero. 1 minus 2 root 5 and then you make when y equals to 0 1 equals to 2 root 5 minus x a half equals to root 5 minus x then a quarter equals to 5 minus x x equals to 5 minus a quarter x will be 19 over 4 which will be here okay, which will be here that point is 19 over 4 comma 0 uh, the three points should be here so we have domain is negative infinity and to the point 5 and the range will be negative infinity to the highest point 1 and below up to 1 and negative infinity to 1. Next one. Next one you want to find endpoint. So you will make 4 minus 2x equals to 0. 2x equals to 4. x equals to 2. So 2 comma 3 will be the endpoint. Okay. You have positive in front of square root. So which is a 1. It's a positive number. But you have negative coefficient of x. That is smaller than 0. So it will be reflected by the y-axis. 
Okay, if it's negative in front of x, it will be reflected by the y-axis. So the original graph looks like that. Then the actual graph will be this. Okay, it will be this one. So let's sketch it. Have two comma three. comma three and then the shape like that so this is the shape and you can see I don't have X intercept I only have Y intercept I only have Y intercepts so when X equals to zero Y will be three plus square root four minus zero is Y plus three over three plus two Y equals to five so you will have zero five as your intercept and that's the shape of the graph that's zero comma five and that's two comma three so we have domain and range so domain will be negative infinity until the point two and the range will be 3 to infinity. Okay, 3 to infinity. So that's for square root functions. Okay, how we sketch square root function? Only two things we need to consider. Where's the endpoint? And which direction is the graph? There are four directions of your graph. Okay, which direction is my graph? And work out direction, work out the endpoints easily to sketch a graph. And you can find x, y intercept to help you to make sure where is the graph. Okay, it's more for like a, con a confirmed stage when you have x, y intercept. Okay, so that's for square root function. And let's have a look at the cubic function. Cubic function is actually much easier than square root function. So for cube root function, you always have domain ranges R. Okay, never change. Domain and range is always R. Okay, not like square root function, you have particular domain, particular range. For cube root function, it's always domain R, range R. And for this graph, it will be the same. Instead of endpoints, I have another thing called point of inflection. Okay, I have another thing called point of inflection. Instead of finding endpoints, I will find point of inflection instead. So what is the point of inflection? Here is the point of inflection. Okay, here is the point of inflection. So which like is like this shape? Okay, that part is the point of inflection. So it will be exactly the same method to find a point of inflection compared to this one and square root. Okay, you basically make inside to be zero, find out the x values, and then the k will be the y value of the point of inflection. And the thing is, you have two direction of your graph. You only have an increasing direction, which looks like that, when your a greater than zero, like say we have that, when you have your a greater than zero, n greater than zero at the same time, you always have an increasing graph when your a is smaller than zero and n also smaller than zero. Okay, so when they both greater than zero or when they both smaller than zero, it's always an increasing graph. And you have a decreasing graph, like that. When one of that is, say, a smaller than zero but n greater than zero, or you have a greater than zero but n smaller than zero, okay, you have one of that is smaller than zero, then it's a decreasing graph. Okay, you only have two directions, both positive, both negative, they all have the same sign that is increasing. One of that is decrease, one of that is negative, one of that is positive, then it's a decreasing function. Okay, let's have a look at this one. It always got x, y intercept. Okay, always have x, y intercept. So let's have a look at the first one. First one, I have 2x plus 4 equals to 0. x will equal to negative 2. So point of inflection will be negative 2, negative 3. 
and have positive here and positive in the front so it's an increasing graph like a graph like that an increasing graph and let's find x y intercept so when x equals to 0 y will equals to cube root of 4 minus 3 is this number greater or smaller than 0 smaller okay that number is smaller than three so that's a number smaller than zero and i'll say when y equals to zero then the cube root of 2x plus 4 will equals to 3 then 2x plus 4 will be 3 cubed so which is 27 so 2x equals to 27 minus 4 which is 23 then x equals to 23 over 2, which is 11.5. Okay, so you have x intercept here, uh, y, y intercept here, and x intercept here. So I have negative 2 and negative 3, which is here. And you have x in the set as 11.5, which is about here. And you have y. Okay, that's the point of inflection. Let's label this. It's minus 2, minus 3. And you have this point. This point is a value is that y smaller than zero which say somewhere here and then you will connect the graph like this so okay so that's the other half of the graph okay go beyond than that so here gives you 23 over 2 comma zero that's the point of inflection that is zero root cube root four minus three and then here is minus two minus three okay. it's like quite bad shape but that's the idea okay that's the idea so you have domain ranges always r okay dom f equals to r and ran of f equals to r okay for the next one for the next one next one you will have point of inflection you will have point of inflection at one comma one okay for sure one comma one and that's positive but here is negative then it's a decreasing graph like that okay make sure your graph looks like this do not draw like that okay so it's increased slowly it's not something like that it's not like going that direction it's go this direction okay it's like more flat and it's not go quicker in that direction so that is a cubic function okay that's a cubic function and that is a cube root function they're all increasing graphs but one increasing slowly and one increasing really quick okay one is a cubic function and one is a cube root function so we have this graph okay we have this graph which is decreasing and when x equals to zero y equals to one minus a half cube root of one which is still uh, minus one okay cube root of minus one zero minus one is minus one cube root of minus one which is y equals to one minus a half and minus one so y equals to three on two when y equals to zero y should equals to a half cube root of x minus one then times two on both sides you have that 
Then 2 to the power of 3 equals to x minus 1. x equals to 9. So you have 9, 0 as the x-intercept and 0, 3 on 2, which is the y-intercept. So we have point of inflection at 1, 1. I have 1, 1 is the point of inflection. And I have 9, 0 is the x-intercept, which is here. And also I have 0, 3 on 2, which will be here. That's the y-intercept. So the graph will look like this. Okay, will look like this. Okay, so it's here, intersects are here. Zero comma nine. This one is one one and this is zero comma three on two. So domain is R, range is R as well. So question 3, we want to find point of inflection, so it's minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0, 3x equals to 2, x equals to 2 on 3. So 2 on 3 comma 1, which is the point of inflection. I have negative here and negative here, so it's a positive graph, looks like this, okay, it's a positive graph. And say when x equals to 0, y should be 1 minus cube root of 2. That's a number greater than 1, okay? It's in between 1 and 2. So that is a number smaller than 0. And when y equals to 0, y should equal to cube root of 3x minus 2. Then 1 equals to 3x minus 2. 3 equals to 3x. x equals to 1. So 1, 0 is the x-intercept. Okay, I'll have that is three on uh, two on three, comma one. And you have 1 comma 0 uh, and we will have 0 wait uh, it's a negative 3 this is a negative 3x plus 2. Okay, some mistake here. That's not 1, 0. So that is 1 equals to minus 3x plus 2. You subtract that is minus 1 equals to minus 3x. Then your x equals to 1 or 3. So it shouldn't be 1. So it's 1 or 3, which is here. Which is here. And then you have another one is small y intercept is smaller than zero which is here so the shape of the graph will be like this that's the point of inflection 
and here is a third comma zero and here is zero comma one minus that So still domain range is both R. Okay, domain range still both R. Okay, the last one. The last one, two minus four X equals to zero, two equals to four X, X equals to a half. Then a half comma three is the point of reflection. Here is negative, here is positive. One positive, one negative, decreasing function like this. When x equals to zero, y will be three plus root, uh, cube root of two. When y equals to zero, three equals to uh, three plus cube root of two minus four x equals to zero. Then cube root of 2 minus 4x equals to negative 3. 2 minus 4x equals to negative 27 because it's negative 3 to the cube. Then 2 plus 27 equals to 4x. 29 equals to 4x. x equals to 29 over 4. Okay, so x uh not this x intercept and y intercept is here point of inflection is here okay so you will have a half and three Intercept is 29 over 4, say it's here, and then you have 3 plus that, which is 4 point a little bit, which is here. Okay. Okay, that's the graph. You will have zero comma three plus root three root uh, cube root of two. That point is a half comma three, and this point is twenty nine over four comma zero. Okay, to me and range still R and R. It's still R and R. So that's how you sketch cube root. Okay, that's how you sketch cube root. Okay, that's we really finish everything now, okay?